Okay. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. If there's anybody here. Um, this is Junichiro Horikawa, and this is the weekly to Houdini tutorial live. And this is the 62nd episode for its tutorial live series. And the topic for today is to create this kind of infinite loop animating kite tiling based kite tiling uh, rotated and resets <clears throat> hey which is pretty simple as you can see uh, it is it basically created a procedurally and you can change several parameters like the number of uh, <clears throat> Tile, non number of tiles in a circular dimension and as well an angle ratio for the kite tile okay so that's what I'm gonna to create today and I'm gonna be quit I'm gonna go I'm gonna be quick to implement this one since it's going to be really simple and there's another important live stream coming which is the uh, Unreal Engine 5 from I think in one, an hour or so I'm gonna be quick because I want to watch that as well All right, so let's do this Hello everybody, so let's do this from scratch. So first thing first um, Let me just show you my uh, where does this inspiration comes from. This is the some yeah, I've just started. This is the book that I referred to, which is called as Tesserations, which is a really beautiful book. And in one of the pages here, I saw this image, this one, which shows <coughs> uh, the tiling pattern that I really liked, uh, shown in 3D, which is kite tiling, extruded in 3D uh, using uh, with the rosette pattern and with 15 edges or 20 edges and so on so i found this really beautiful so i wanted to make this and also since i'm going to use this houdini would i wanted to make it and as an animation and if i'm going to make it an animation it will be great if the animation could be an, an infinite loop so that's what i'm going to try today so to start off, I am going to start by creating a geometry node as always. Let me just save this somewhere, maybe on the desktop. Okay, now starting from creating a circle polygon. Let's make this polygon and place it on XZ plane. And the top plane is kind of reversed, so let's make this reverse so that the front face will come up, upward like this. Now the first parameter I want to define is the number of edges for the circle, for this polygon. Now any number of polygon would work, so I'm just gonna create some parameters which is going to be stored inside this controller new node. Let me just make an integer, uh, let's say number of edges, edges from say 3 to 20. Okay, now I am going to make this 15 as an initial value since that's the <coughs> one shown in the book. Okay, now I'm going to copy that, copy that value into this divisions. Now, <clears throat> let's think about what kind of processes I have to uh, do in order to create a kite based pattern, kite tiling. Okay, so <clears throat> think about that. Uh, I am going to show some basic step in a sketch. Let me just re write in in really simple polygon like a octagon okay 
and the one that I'm gonna create is first of all create a kite like shape for each edges looks like this okay the <clears throat> the the characteristic or the property of this kite tiling is that this kite tiling must be able to scale it and be able to place it in this space right here in order to expand its shape so what I need to care about is this angle right here this angle right here and this angle right here must be the same value okay and angle right here and this angle right here is different okay <clears throat> so what I need to do here is that once I define what the angle what the angle would be for this one this angle must automatically be chosen based on the number of edges and uh, by doing this you'll be able to infinitely expand its shape by repeatedly or recursively copy its Kyle tiling over and over again like this so let's think about how I can be able to get that angle value if I have this edge like these and let's say I have an angle like theta this one and what I would like to do and what I would what I need to do first is to define this angle right here let's call this I don't know mm, delta okay and by having by by defining what delta is I should be able to get this angle on the opposite side for the Kyle kite tiling let's call this beta okay now to do to get this value here uh, the, <clears throat> I need to consider that these kite uh, kite pattern has to be copied can be copied like this with a little bit of scaling on the edge like this and you have another kite which shares the same angle same beta right here and this one has to be delta okay and this one has to be beta okay so uh, to get this beta value the beta angle or maybe this value right here uh, let's call this alpha you can create a diagonal line creating like running like this so first of all in order to get this alpha value alpha angle you can do some subtraction you uh, uh, by you can retrieve this value by doing the subtraction between this angle this angle and pi so the whole angle right here is pi okay which is not 180 degrees okay so and this angle right here can be defined can be taken by can be cal calculated by 180 degrees minus uh, theta divided by 2 okay so that's this angle and this angle right here can be defined by dividing this delta by 2 okay so as a result alpha is equal to 180 degrees minus 2 divided by uh, 180 minus theta divided by 2 minus 2 alpha or delta this is delta okay so that's uh, wait a minute yeah that's delta so this is the value that I want in order to get the alpha and if you get the alpha you'll be able to get the beta angle as well so knowing that let's try to calculate those two angles and create the kite tile for the first um, layer 
then after that you you can just do the re we can just uh, do the same thing repeatedly by using some feedback loop so I am going to use the primitive wrangle to create the first loop let's say create create kite piling okay now <clears throat> Uh, first of all, I'm going to get the center point, which is at P. Let's just call this P, okay? And I want to get the vertex uh, vertices by the order of its <coughs> uh, in the in in order, so that I can also then convert it into a point number then convert it into a point position so that so that I can get a point position uh, which is on the neighbor like the pair pair of points which uh, have which its position is its in neighbor okay so to do that I am first going to get the vertices from the primitive which should be in a clockwise order I think so prim this is zero Prim num. Then let's loop through all the vertices. Okay, get the vertex number by getting the value at the i index. Now com let's convert this uh, vertex number into a point number by using a vertex point function like this. Now by having a point number you'll be able to get the point position as well so let's get that. And I want to get two point positions which is in the neighbor so let's call the first point PT1 and the first vertex P VT1. Okay. And I'm also going to name the first position point positions position one is equal to point zero p at pt one. Okay. <clears throat> now let's also get the second vertex, which is VTS i plus one, and calculate with the modulus. Uh, the length of VTS so that if it gets more than the number of lengths of the VTS list or array it will go back to zero okay now I'm going to retrieve the point number two at VT2 this, this one should be VT1 vertex point zero VT2 okay now let's also get the point position two Position two is point zero p p t two. All right. Now, now that I have got two point positions, I'll be able to get. I'll be able to calculate the angle. Uh, in order to do that, I need to have. I need to determine the first angle uh, in interior <coughs> and inside for the kite. If I have one, if I have that single angle for the interior then I'll be able to define automatically define the outer angle as well so let's try to define what the angle is and in order to do that I am first going to define I'm going to search for the current angle from the center point to the each of the edge points okay so I'm, what I'm going to do is to calculate this angle right here for each edge to do that I can do some uh, calculations using a, a a cosine together with the dot product so uh, use by calc in order to calculate the angle between two vectors so first I'm going to create two vectors b1 is equal to position 2 minus well it's position 1 minus uh, the center point of the circle or which is equal to p because I have it right here now let's also normalize this. Let's have another vector. Normalize position 2 minus p 
which is going to be the second vector. So the first vector is going to be from the first point, the, from the center point of the circle to one of the point on the edge. And the second vector will be the na neighboring, <coughs> the vector from the center point to the neighbor point. So now that I have two vectors, I'll be able to calculate the angle by uh, doing some <coughs> simple equations, float, let's name this theta is equal to mm, a dot product of v1 and v2 will be the value of cosine theta so by using a cos to this result you'll be able to get the angle in radians all right now that i have this angle right here for this pi shape <coughs> Uh, next thing I would like to do is to uh, determine what the angle is for the kite uh, edge, which you can define it by yourself by creating your um, own parameter. So let's do this. I'm going to create some ratio value from 0 to 1. Let's name this angle ratio. And I'm going to multiply this angle ratio with the theta so that the value will be uh, always be larger than this theta value, meaning that I want to make this angle ratio more than one. Always, okay. So let's name. Let's make this as a parameter. CHF angle angle ratio. Okay. Now I'm going to name the other other angle. Let's name this, um, <clears throat> how do I name this, um, phi, phi is equal to um, the current theta angle, which is static based on the number of edges, multiplied by this angle ratio, okay, angle ratio, okay, let's promote the parameter, which is it? currently in between 0 to 1 so let's make this range from 1 to some big value like 20 okay now starting from a small number like 2.5 or so now that I have this angle value uh, the next thing I could do I would do is in order to calculate the uh, alpha value that I was talking about which is this angle right here that I've been talking about so in order to do that I need to do this calculations 180 degrees subtracted by 180 degrees uh, subtracted by a theta divided by 2 then subtract by uh, in this case it, it's set delta but actually I wrote this as phi so phi divided by 2 so let's do that so the let's say the angle alpha is <coughs> pi minus pi minus theta divided by two or multiplied by 0 0.5 and subtracted by a phi divided by two or multiplied by 0 0.5. Okay, so that will be the alpha value. Okay, now that I have uh, two angles for the kite, one is this uh, theta value and one. Actually, <clears throat> actually, in order to, what I want to do is to get the point positions for this kite uh, vertex and this point, and I'll be able to get this point uh, value point positions by just using this alpha together with the tangent okay so for the height of this value right here I think I can still use the uh, phi currently I'm using as a phi so phi divided by 2 is this value right here and using 
since I know uh, I know what the value is for wait a minute I really don't know what what I want to know is this height value but currently I don't have any information for this value here so maybe uh, <clears throat> getting this angle value might be a good idea right here okay let's call this lambda okay so the lambda will be uh, be derived from the phi so float lambda is equal to since we are talking about the triangle uh, and we I can just subtract uh, pi with a <coughs> phi that I have created and divide it by 2 which will be the corner angle okay I think so then now that I have lambda and alpha or la, let me just call this beta to be make it understandable both angle are at the side of the kite now that I can now I can use both of them to estimate the height uh, using the length of this edge right here okay so the first let's say the height one which is the height for the kite in interior can be determined determined by using the tangent together with the beta multiply by a this edge distance multiply by two the half size of this edge so distance position one position two multiply by 0.5 okay so height two is the kite height for the outer <coughs> exterior which is going to be the tangent of alpha multiplied by the distance position 1, position 2, multiplied by 0.5 alright and now that I have two informations let's try to create a new point to create a kite tile uh, I will be I am going to create first of all we're going to create the vector value going from the center point to the center of this <coughs> center point of the edge to the center of the circle so <coughs> that will be vector uh, direction is equal to a position 1 plus position 2 multiplied by 0.5 <coughs> which will be the center point positions and then a subtract by subtract with at, uh, p which is the center point which in this case uh, equal to zero 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 because i have started from zero 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 but let's just say it's fine now this is the direction going from the center to the outer edge now i'm going to also normalize this so that it will be a unit vector Okay, now I have this direction and the height value for the kite. I'll be able to create a new point uh, for each edges. Now let's see. Int um, new pt1 is equal to at point. And the center point position will be position 1 plus position 2 multiplied by 0.5 plus the direction multiplied by h2 that's the first point and int new pt1 <coughs> pt2 is equal to add point 0 position 1 position 1 position 2 multiplied by 0.5 minus direction multiplied by h1 okay now did i get it Okay, so this is the estimated place for this kite uh, tiling and if I change this angle right here I'll be able to change its shape and hopefully this will this can be tileable now let's try to create a, these point as a polygon now I have those four points I'll be able to create this uh, <coughs> square using those uh, connecting those four points so let's create that 
I'm going to I guess I gotta do I gotta create the polygon inside this loop because I'm uh, referring to each of the edges <coughs> inside the loop so for each of the edges I'm going to create a new polygon by adding primitive as a polygon and okay let's start by a new PT1 and a PT1 and new PT2 and PT2 okay which is kind of a reversed so let's try to change the order I am going to bring the let's say I'm going to make this point 0.2 and this one to point 0.1 okay now it's facing front side now this is the first layer of the tile and now I no longer need the original referenced primitive so I'm going to remove that remove prim 0 prim num 1 okay now next thing I would like to do is to tr uh, create the same tile uh, where you have right here where in the space right here and this by scaling and by scaling this kite it, this should be able to fit nicely to these uh, gap right here to each of the gap and the number of uh, kite is pretty much the same in this case I'm using the division of 15 for this polygon so there should be 15 kite tile for each layers okay now <clears throat> to be able to do this pretty easily I'm going to try to implement a recursive method by uh, thinking about how I made this shape so I started from creating uh, using this <clears throat> uh, circle shape which has 15 edges so if I have another like uh, circle shape which has 15 edges by having these point as an edges so if I recreate the circle using those points and use that circle to recreate the polygon using the same function right written right here I'll be able to recursively repeatedly do the, all the same process over and over again so <clears throat> to do that I'm going to create this circle connecting all those newly created outer points I am going to name this outer prim using at prim zero poly okay now inside the loop this new pt1 is the one that I want to use it for this new uh, outer primitive so I am going to use the add vertex zero and to this outer prim I'm going to add this new PT1 over and over again inside the loop as a result you'll be able to create this outer primitive geometry and in the next loop I'm going to use this primitive in order to create the next kite shape using the same angle value right here so to do that I need to create a feedback loop for each number let's give this inside here and I am going to make this only process on top of this uh, outer primitive so in order to do that I am going to create a group to this outer primitive that I have created right here using set prim group um, named as I don't know outer to this outer primitive and let's make sure this that this primitive wrangle can only work for this outer primitive group okay to to be able to be able for this one to work I have to make a group for this initial circle as well as an uh, outer so I'm going to create a group node uh, for the primitive and let's name this outer okay now in order to make this as a feedback loop I need to first change this one to a feedback each iterations and then change this 
for each start to fetch feedback. Okay, as a result, you'll be able to easily create this recursively expanded kite tiling in Rosettes. Now I don't really need the outer primitive anymore, so let's delete that. In the last, I'm going to use the de delete node. Only delete the primitive with the outer group. And as a result, you'll be able to create this uh, nicely shaped pattern. Which looks pretty nice and B is controllable by changing this angle right here. If it's equal to 1, it's a kind of infinite shape. If I make this really big, I'll be able to create this kind of a rose-like shape. It's pretty nice. Now, by changing the uh, number of edges as well, you'll be able to change its shape as well. If you make it really small, you'll be able to create this kind of shape. And together with changing the angle right here, will be pretty interesting to see how it uh, changes. All right. Now I'm going to keep it as a 15. Let's create another parameter right here uh, as an angle. Okay. I'm just going to name it angle. And let's make this from 1 to 20. Okay. And multiply this. I mean, copy this parameter to this one right here. All right. Okay. Looks nice. Now, <clears throat> now that I have created this uh, 2D tiling, which is um, simple but beautiful enough. I would I would like to make it as a three-dimensional geometry by extruding like a tower and also be able to animate it infinitely by using a little trick. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going back to this controller and make the number of edges or I'm going to create another parameter called the iteration, the number of iterations for the loop, feedback loop, so that I can define how many numbers of, how many layers I would want for this um, Rosetta-like shape. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's say from 1 to 100, okay, which might be really high, but let's just see. I'm going to copy this value to for each end iteration value here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's try to make this 3D and I want to make the center uh, area to be higher and the outer area to be smaller. Okay, so in order to do that, I, I probably need to define some uh, attribute to each of the primitive each of the, for each of the layers with a specific attribute which uh, can be defined as a height. So <clears throat> I'm going to go back to the create kite tiling and I'm going to refer to the iteration value for in this for each count. I'm going to connect this right here in the second input then get those iteration value from the second input detail int iterations is equal to detail one iteration and number of iteration is equal to detail one num iterations okay now I'm going to directly use this value be applied as an attribute to each of the primitive inside this loop so to this newly created polygon new poly I'm going to set a primitive attribute, set prim attrib 0. <clears throat> Let's call this height. And to this new poly, I'm going to define number of iterations minus iterations. So that the center point, the center primitive, the first value has the ma maximum value. And the uh, outer primitive has the lowest value as a height which is goal which is going to be zero okay let's check if I go outside the loop and check the primitive attribute 
with a geometry spreadsheet, I'd be able to ch check the height going from 14 to 1, which is great. Okay. Now, next thing I'm going to do is to use those attributes for the height of these each of the faces. So, I'm going to use just a poly extrude. And then define the basic distance for the extrusions, let's say starting from 10. Then I'm also going to refer to the attribute for each primitive by going in and going into the local control and check the distance scale and change this to a height. And as a result, you'll be able to multiply this height by this extrusion base distance. Okay. Now, um, obviously it's a bit too narrow as a tower, so I'm going to increase the number of durations to see what happens. So if I'm in going to increase this value here, now it's getting to gonna get more interesting. Maybe let's get it more higher value, like 15. The initial goal is that I don't want to really see the edges, but I just want to see somewhere around here being re repeatedly rotating and rotating infinitely. Okay. So this one looks good. This one already looks good. Now is the time to create a animation for the transformation. Okay, so, so the first thing I would like to do is to create a let's say the rotational animation <clears throat> for this one. Now in order to create the rotational animation I have to think about like how many turns it should do for the uh, <clears throat> the whole loop the whole single loop okay let's make this loop like 60 st starting from 1 to 60 and I want to use these uh, frame to turn uh, as minimum as possible so in this case uh, let's think about how many turn how many like angle I should move <clears throat> I should rotate okay now thinking about that um, a single turn uh, I want to make this edge come to this edge right here by rotating the specific angle and this can this angle can be defined by the number of edges right here together with the the circle the whole circles uh, angle which is 360 degrees so if you divide 360 degrees by the number of edges you'll be able to get the angle between this point right here and this point right here okay so this will be the value that you want to use in order to animate from for this uh, value to come to right here if it's rotating clockwise if it's rotating counterclockwise then this point comes to this point Either way is fine. Now let's do that by simply using a transform node. Transform node. And let's try to create some expressions using those angle value. So I'm going to, uh, what I would like to do is to try to change this um, Y angle right here using an expression based on the frame. So first of all, I'm going to create a frame based value, F f divided by f end which will create the volume between 0 to 1 and from 1 to 6 frame, 60 frame now i also want to convert this into a range between the 0 to the 360 degrees divided by 15 so multiply by 360 degrees divided by the a <coughs> number of edges which can be copied from the controller, so I'm going to copy it from here, paste it or right here. All right, now let's see if I play it. I can see that it's rotating now infinitely. Now that's good. Okay, now next thing I am I would like to do is to create a scaling animation, meaning I want to bring this shape coming down to this shape or yeah I think that's the place or this shape this shape coming to 
this shape or this shape I forgot which one maybe this shape mm, or maybe probably this shape if I rotate okay I think um, what I was talking about is ro ro by rotating I would like to scale it and try to change this shape into this shape right here okay so meaning because it's in the same aligned uh, place this is the <coughs> uh, kind of a uh, kind of offset it positions so this is more like it this is more uh, related positions for this one to be able to change so the difference between the this one and this one is the um, <coughs> First of all, a two times of the extrusion height, and also you also need to consider how much it scaled up from this one to this one. Okay, the scale ratio is the same for the next layer to the next layer, the current layer to the next layer. So, from this kite tile to the next kite tile, the scale ratio is the same. Now, after this, this this from this scale, uh, from this tile. To this tile the scale ratio is the same so you have to multiply the scale ratio two times in order to make this become this one okay so in order to do the scaling I first need to define like how many scaling I have to do like what's the scale ratio of the these kite between this one and the next one so that I'll be able to use that ratio to get the next one as well Okay, so to do that, what I can do is just get the length ratio between this edge and this edge because in the next ratio, because in the next layer, this length become this length. And this length is equal to this length edge. Okay, so I just need to get the ratio between this one and this one and you'll be able to get the scaling ratio automatically. So, <clears throat> going back to the this uh, primitive <clears throat> wrangle, I'll be able. I am going to now calculate this scale ratio. Maybe somewhere around here. So let's name this scale ratio. Is equal to a first of all distance between the uh, this one and this one. So new pos 1 and pos 1 okay divided by the distance between new pos 2 and actually I didn't really create this new position 1 as a vector so let's do that first I'm going to create a new pos1 as a vector and that vector should be this value right here I'm gonna replace the old these with new pos1 now same for the new position 2 new, new pos2 is equal to these value Let's paste it like this now I have those new position 1, new position 2, I'll be able to calculate the distance ratio, scale ratio, by calculating like this. Now, uh, now that I have this value, I can apply this into a primitive attribute, or in this case, the ratio is the same for all over the place, so I can just set it as a detail attribute. So set detail attrib 0 scale ratio as scale ratio all right okay and let's check this out let's go into the detail and this is the actual scale ratio for this kite shape and if you change the angle I think this ratio will change as well so let's check if I change the angle to this something like 2 0.3 or something now the scale ratio becomes 1.6 so you can see that 
Now this is just a check. I'm going to go back to somewhere around four. All right. Now, <clears throat> now that I have the scale ratio, I can use that with the animation. So going back to the transform node, I'm going to now uh, do the animation for the scaling. And in this case, I just need to scale in two dimension, meaning X and Z uh, plane. So I'm going to just use this scale X and scale Z in order to do the animation from this tile to this tile and from one frame to 60 frame. Okay, so to do that, I am going to, let's think about the expression. Now, first of all, same for the this one, I'm going to divide F, the current frame value with the F end. And what's the angle? <clears throat> no, I, I'm talking about the scale. So now I need to uh, get the detail attribute from the current node using op input and the detail attribute name is called scale ratio scale ratio at zero and I need to multiply this scale ratio two times in order to make this size okay so I am going to use the power function with two so that uh, the value will be the one that I would want. Okay. Now that I have, now that I, now that I do a did a scale for the a x value, I need to do it for the z value. But uh, now that I think, I think the scale has to start from one because by using by this equations, the scaling starts from zero, which is not. Uh, great. So the scaling should start from 1, should always start from 1. I need to fix this a little bit. Um, let's see. I am going to use the fit 0, 1 for the FF divided by F end, which is going to be 1 to this power of 2 value all right okay i think this works now i'm gonna the scaling for the z value is the same as the x so i'm just going to copy this parameter paste it right here okay let's check this out if i play this okay um you do see a little bit of glitch but because of the height, because I didn't really change the height yet, but if I look from the top view, let's go to the top view, set view to the top. The scaling looks really smooth. All right, nice. Now, the only thing I am left with out with the animation is the height changes. So let's also do that. Okay, I think there's too much number of tiles. I'm going to make this a bit of smaller. Okay. Okay, so the height is, uh, as I said, the height should change from this height to this height. So that's the double value of the extrusion. So <clears throat> going back to the ex poly extrude. This is the current height. So let's also pr parameterize this as well so that I'll be able to change it later. Uh, height. Height going from 0, 1 to uh, 20. I'm going to start with 10. I'm going to copy this parameter then use this to for the extrusion height 
like this. Now I am going to animate the height as well by changing this Y translate value. And in this case, I'm going to go down <coughs> uh, since by scaling up the tile, the, the next tile should go downward by the mul multiply by two of this extrusion height. So FF multiply uh, divided by F and multiply by two multiply by the extrusion height should be the value and in negative direction okay let's check this out and if i play it now it's smooth smoothly connecting i think this is already in shape nice so now you'll be able to get the infinite loop animation already if I make this like 30 frame looks nice 10 20 okay good enough I think 24 all right so <clears throat> I think this is good enough I am going to finish this by also changing the color and this uh, this, this will be it for this uh, tutorial Okay, so uh, in order to change the color, I'm going to create some float based uh, values based on the height uh, primitive attribute uh, to make this uh, smooth color. Okay, smooth gradient color. So I am going to use the primitive wrangle <coughs> after the translate. And I'm also going to retrieve the maximum value for the height which is probably equal to the number of iterations so I'm just gonna get this number of iterations value copy then let's set some height value uh, height based color value first I'm going to set the uh, create the T value which is the divisions of the current frame divided by the F end and let's make one of the value to float so that this will be a float value in between 0 to 1. Now, I'm going for each primitive, I'm going to create the attribute called call. And based on the height value, f at height, and subtract it by 2 times, uh, t times 2 multiply by 0, which is the, which is the same reason why... Uh, the reason why I use two mul multiplication by two is because the height in in the one loop, this height, the height of this tile comes to this height. So uh, this is why I'm doing like this. Okay. Now let's name this color, and finally I'm going to use the color node to use the primitive attribute call call which is from one to what was it uh, the maximum height value which I, I have why well, I have copied from the controller which is number of iterations okay as a result you'll be able to create this kind of grad gradient color and now you can change this gradient color to any color you want just gonna make this really random <clears throat> like this and if I play it, it the color should change gradiently smoothly as well okay make this smooth shaded it's pretty nice now I, I guess I don't like the outer edge like this so I'm gonna make the outer edge black so that Will be more smooth. All right, <clears throat> looks nice. Looks nice. And if you look, if the tile is big enough, then if you close, uh, if you make a close up like these, it lo really looks like an infinite loop. All right, <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. You can now change several parameters like height, 
number of iterations or number of edges. This is interesting. You can make like number of edges really high. Wow. Which is also interesting. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Or you can make it really low as well, like hexagon. Where is it? Where did it go? All right, here we go. This is also nice, I think. I'm going to keep it as 15. Make the angle around 4. And the number of iterations around, I don't know, 42 or something. Scare it somewhere around here. The height. Currently, it looks okay. Now, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. And the process is pretty simple, but the outlook that I have created as a geometrical <clears throat> um, animation looks pretty nice, I think. So, <clears throat> I hope you like it. Now, <clears throat> That's it for today, and thank you for watching. Um, <clears throat> if you have any comment, please throw anything. And thank you for all the comments for today. <clears throat> and if there's no questions, I would like to just end this tutorial now. Um, I'm doing this tutorial weekly, so if you're interested in mm, one of the topic that I'm throwing, um, please consider joining next time as well. Okay, and I am going to upload the file that I have just created to the uh, GitHub, which I am going to paste the link to the video description page so you can download the file later. And I'm also uh, also doing the Patreon page, so if you like to support me, I'll be really appreciate it. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, and. I think the live for the Unreal Engine 5 is going to start. Let's watch that. Okay. Thank you and good night.